Back in the day before every single marginally talented geek decided that they wanted to make a podcast or a YouTube channel, they made a webcomic. This gold rush was probably inspired in 1998 by the runaway success of Penny Arcade. Penny Arcade, as you probably know, is a webcomic about two guys who like to play video games. People saw that and they're like, hey, I play video games too. Let me get rich and famous by drawing big gaping mouths and explainy hands. And thus, the internet became absolutely flooded with webcomics about video games and the people who play them. And that's not to say that they were all doing the same thing. There were a few that tried to distinguish themselves. Take Overclock, for example, which led to the much more popular OC Remix. Overclock was a webcomic that focused mainly on the growing emulation scene at the time. And then you had 8-Bit Theater, which took sprites from Final Fantasy games and used them to parody the genre cliches. And then you had VG Cats, which instead of two guys, it was two cats. I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie, VG Cats was probably my favorite of all of them. <laughs> but the truth is that some people didn't really want something different. Some people were so addicted to reading the story of two guys sitting on a couch talking about video games that they really just wanted the great value version of Penny Arcade. And in 2002, a comic called Control Alt Delete swooped in to give everybody their fix of wide open mouths and explainy hands. Control Alt Delete, aka the Kirkland Signature Gaming webcomic, was created by a guy named Tim Buckley. Not the musician Tim Buckley, this Tim Buckley. By many people, this is considered to be the absolute worst gaming webcomic in history. And the thing about it is, it started off very self-aware. Control Alt Delete began as a parody of this very saturated genre before it quickly became the very thing it was mocking. Let's take a look at the first Control Alt Delete comic. So, is a strip about two guys who sit around and play video games? Seems a tad cliché, doesn't it? Nah, it's tried and true. Besides, we have a hook. Oh really? What? We've got a third character. And the third character is a watermelon. Hee <laughs> hee. Mmm. What? Serious guy is not amused. And now, that joke that you saw there, where the wacky guy does something wacky and random and the serious guy gives him a look, that's basically the main joke that this comic has, and it repeats itself over and over again for 15 or more years. With those same exact facial expressions. That's actually a major point of criticism that a lot of people had for this comic, that they just paste the same facial expressions over and over and over again. Of course, you're watching this on YouTube, where half the channels are presented by characters that only have three or four facial expressions. So, you know, glass houses and whatnot. And honestly, I think that would be perfectly fine if the writing were stronger, but it wasn't. It was basically that same joke format that I showed you there, or really, really, really long rants. Just take a look at all of these words, and don't worry, I'm not gonna read them to you, I just want you to soak them in. Seriously, Control Alt Elite is not the X-Men, and Tim Buckley is not Chris Claremont. And we probably should talk a bit more about the comics creator, Tim Buckley, because really, he's at the very heart of why you're probably here. The loss meme. So let's get to know Tim Buckley a little bit. Here's what he has to say. My name is Tim Buckley. I'm a 24 year old gamer. I've played every violent video game in existence. I have never killed anyone. There are millions of gamers just like me and we're getting sick of people like you blaming your problems on us. Ignorance causes violence, not video games. Man up and take responsibility. We outnumber you and the people that think like you. Don't fuck with us. <laughs> So Tim Buckley is very clearly a guy who cares a lot about gaming and gamers. And it seemed like he was perfectly content to spend years churning out this comic that was mostly humorous, very rarely serious, or had any kind of continuity. And his readers were more than happy to read it. But then, all of a sudden, or what seemed to be all of a sudden, Tim got up one day and decided he wanted to be a fucking artiste. It begins with a pregnancy storyline. Ethan, I just got back from the doctor's appointment. I'm... I'm pregnant. <sighs> and he peed himself. And this comic, which was the beginning of a much longer story arc, divided the fan base a bit. Some people were perfectly fine with Tim Buckley stretching his arms out a little bit and trying to take the comic in new creative directions. But a lot of people, probably way more people, were like, what the hell is happening to our gaming comic? 
They really, really didn't want this thing they read that was mostly about people talking about video games to suddenly turn into some serious family drama. And over the next few months, references to the impending baby and the wedding were peppered in amongst the usual types of uh, goofy, wacky comics. But that baby was a ticking time bomb, and a lot of the audience was dreading what direction the comic might go in as soon as it was born. Well, boy did they get lucky. Without further ado, I present to you Tim Buckley's most famous creation, Loss. She had a miscarriage. No baby. Problem. Problem solved. What? This is probably the most that a vaguely humorous comic strip has ever or ever will completely blindside its audience. There are ways that you can tackle serious issues in comedy, but when you miss, you really miss. Like, everybody remembers that episode of The Fresh Prince where Will gets shot and it's all serious and whatnot, but that didn't totally derail the show. Like, whatever that was, loss is the opposite of that. And in an attempt to get in front of the obvious controversy that this caused, Tim Buckley published a blog post on the same day. First, he addressed the controversy over deciding to take the comic in a serious direction. I know that everybody has their own idea of what Control-Alt-Delete is supposed to be. Some people feel it's a video game comic and the character stories are just filler or don't belong, and some people think it's a story comic and the one-shots are just filler. Most times it's categorized as a gaming comic, which is fine and understandable. When asked directly though, I describe Control-Alt-Delete as a gamer comic or a comic about gamers. Semantics, perhaps, but an important distinction for me. While the strip has always and will always have its foundation firmly rooted in gaming, it's not the only topic I want to tell jokes and stories about. He also stated that he had planned this story arc from the very beginning. As I've said in the past, the grand plan for the comic and its characters has been written for years. I knew that, and how, Ethan was going to propose to Lila when I introduced her into the comic. I knew when he proposed that shortly before the wedding, Lila was going to get pregnant and then miscarry, and I had to wait two years to write it. I know what happens next, and I know how they handle it. I know what happens either further down the line. I know what Scott is doing in his room. I know who moves out and when. I know who dies and who doesn't die. And I know that, through all of it, Ethan is still Ethan, Lila is still Lila, and Lucas is still Lucas, and they are still gamers. Damn, they should have got Tim Buckley to write for Lost. And then he went on to explain why he did the miscarriage story. So many years ago, long before I started the comic, I was in a relationship and we suffered a miscarriage. Now, this relationship was toxic to begin with and doomed to fail regardless, so that the miscarriage was the straw that broke the camel's back and is no surprise. Later that week, this portion of Tim's statement would be republished in Cyanide and Happiness parody of Loss. It should be noted that when I went to the Cyanide and Happiness website and saved this comic, the file name was Tim Actually Said This. And of course, Cyanide and Happiness would not be the only ones to parody this comic. Uh-uh, if you're on this channel, you already know. You're a fellow traveler. You know how this story winds up. The Lost Comet comes out and goes on to be one of the internet's longest surviving memes. With parodies that become more and more minimalist and esoteric over the course of years. It's a meme that, for some reason, despite all odds, just refuses to stay dead. You think it's over with and then it just creeps its way back up. Rise from your grave. Why? I don't know! Can you imagine how it must feel to create a work that is so exceptionally terrible, it does the impossible and spawns a meme that refuses to stay dead? Well, in a 2015 interview with New York Magazine, Tim Buckley addressed this question, and surprisingly he seems to be taking it in stride, albeit with a little bit of resentment towards his audience's lack of a refined palette for his artistry. The piece is entitled, Talking to the man behind loss, the internet's longest running miscarriage joke. You see, joke is in quotation marks, which means it's not really a joke. As for the memes, Buckley's reaction to them has varied over the years from anger because perhaps I had miscalculated my demographic's ability slash willingness to approach such a sensitive subject matter, to frustration for Cad being pigeonholed as a wacky gamer comic. And on very rare occasions, as much as I hate to admit it, because I certainly don't want to make light of the subject matter itself, I found them quite amusing. 
Now he says he's flattered that something he made has been entertaining people for more than seven years. And honestly, that's probably the best way you could possibly look at it. So there you have it, story of loss. Until next time, check out one of these other videos, I'm out.